he's going to be the nominee for the GOP. What the heck are they going to do now? Right? What are they going to do now? Maybe, maybe they carry Biden's water for him. Think about it. I mean, they can't come right out and say that they prefer Biden. But if the Murdoch family prefers Biden, then what happens? I'll show you. Because there was a story on their main flagship news show last night ahead of the State of the Union. And they were talking all about shrinkflation and what shrinkflation, actually, maybe they came out tonight, what shrinkflation really is. You see, Biden is trying to blame inflation on big corporations that are just trying to get one over on the consumer. So he explained it last night in the State of the Union. He's like, oh, you know, like you don't get as many potato chips in your potato chip bag anymore. It's all just filled with air. And Fox decided to run with this. By the way, it's totally fake. It's fake news, and I'm going to show you why in just a second. But before I do, just take a look at how they are presenting this. I mean, it just it, it cracks me up. They're, they're, they're doing Biden's work for him. One way businesses are dealing with high prices is by offering customers less of their products. It's called shrinkflation. It's getting a lot of attention now. Correspondent David Lee Miller shows us how it works from New York. Shoppers are paying more for just about everything. But chances are some price hikes might have gone unnoticed because of shrinkflation. The stealthy practice of keeping prices stable but reducing the quantity of a product. Aww, it's isn't that nice? Increase. I mean, it About must be some kind of great feeling. kumbaya moment. Really? I mean, Biden and Fox. And now Fox is explaining what Biden is trying to present. You see, the reason you have inflation, ladies and gentlemen, is really just because of those big corporations. They're trying to take advantage of you. You know what? It's not true. It's not true. And you know how I know it's not true? My little corporation that has no interest in taking advantage of anyone, 76 Research, 76research.com, we ran some numbers and we looked at it. My, my colleague, Rob Horton, who's been a fund manager on Wall Street for so many, for 25 years, absolutely positively brilliant, brilliant guy. I, I only team with the best. And I'm telling you, he ran all of this and we looked at this together and I'm like, wow. So you take the top 10 retailers in America right now, the top 10, and, and Amazon's not in here because Amazon's got the AWS business with something different entirely. So if you really just want to look at pure retail plays, nine out of 10 of them, when you see their gross margins, those gross margins are less than they were in 2020 when Donald Trump was president. So in other words, it's not shrinkflation, it's actually inflation. Okay, prices are just going up. Call it what you want. I mean, maybe they give you less and you pay more. It doesn't matter. This is just plain old inflation, and it is courtesy none other than Joe Biden and maybe Jerome Powell and maybe Chuck Schumer, right? I mean, they all had to spend. So you had Congress spending, and then you had... Joe Biden giving the third stimulus, and then you had Jerome saying, okay, we'll, we'll print some more, we'll print some more, and... What did you get? You got inflation, okay? And, and you can call it whatever you want, Joe, shrinkflation. This is just the blame game. This is you trying to desperately point to somebody else. And now you got Fox to do it with you. I mean, that just cracks me up. 76research.com. We can talk about this some more, but basically, I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud of it. You can get your free guide to independent, independent investing over there. It is critical right now to understand all of this. And I, I'm just sort of shocked. I mean, like, what kind of deal was that? Are they trying to get an interview with him? You know, believe it or not, things like that actually happen in the media. They do. Um, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll trade these little favors behind the scenes. And I do wonder if the anchor of that particular show is trying very hard to get an interview with Joe Biden. And so consequently is like, oh, okay, I'll do you this favor. I'll do you that favor. Right? Like, I mean, it happens. It certainly happens, and I, I don't think we should be naive about any of this. <laughs>
<laughs> but you know what bugs me? It bugs me that everyday Americans are once again getting the shaft. And it used to be like, okay, at least Fox was looking out for people. Okay, now you guys don't even have Fox. I mean, y- you don't, okay? You have me and you have some other people that are streaming and we care about you. You got my colleague, Rob, who I, I, I have known him for so long. He cares about you over at 76 Research. We care. But there's a group of people out there at um, MSNBC, effectively state media. They're all state media these days. MSNBC that want to actually make fun of you. I mean, they not only don't care about you, they, they think you're just sort of the scum of the earth. I mean, watch them here talking about people and, and making fun of the fact that people are worried about immigration. You look at the crime numbers. You look at what's going on in this country. We have every reason, okay, to worry about immigration. Every single reason to be concerned about our borders when they're flying in 320,000 people in the dead of the night, taking them to various cities in the cities, don't even know they're coming. You think Americans shouldn't be worried about that? Watch what they think at MSNBC. I mean, if you look at some of these exit polls, I mean, I live in Virginia. Immigration was the number one issue. <laughs> yes. I mean, again, these could change in, in Virginia. Well, Virginia does have a border with West Virginia. <laughs> very, very contested but you're area. Build the wall. Like, what? I mean, if you look at some of these exit polls, I mean, I live in Virginia. Immigration. Wow. So, um, Rachel Maddow, who is probably one of the most irresponsible journalists I've ever ever, we can't even call her a journalist. She's an entertainer, right? That's just pure entertainment. One of the most irresponsible people I have seen on television. She's compelling. She's interesting. She's wild. I mean, the conspiracy theories. I was like, wait a second. Yeah. They always wanted to go after the likes of me for saying, you know, this dossier doesn't really make all that much sense. And yet she was stringing that thing out night after night after night. Any good reporter could read that and conclude what I concluded, which was that this was some kind of opposition research document. This was not an intelligence document. It didn't read like an intelligence document. It read like something that was getting get handed to Star Magazine that you'd see at the supermarket counter. So it didn't make any sense at all. And yet MSNBC and Rachel Maddow, they ran with this just breathlessly and nobody called them out. But oh gosh, the New York Post finds out that Hunter Biden's laptop is under investigation by the FBI, which it was. And they report this and they lose their Twitter account. And likewise, people that were reporting this would would get shut down. I mean, look, I've been through it, right? Happy, happy to be on the other side of all of that because there were certain things that you just couldn't say during March 2020. We shouldn't live in an environment where you can't say certain things. And yet... These people, the ones that want to make fun of you because you care about immigration and you're a little worried about inflation and these kinds of very important issues for everyday Americans, they make fun of it and yet they're allowed to be on television and to report all kinds of craziness. Now, in the spirit of the First Amendment, I'm not saying you need to shut them down, but I am saying, hey, you know what? Let's be fair. Don't shut one side down while giving the other a free pass because then you really are living. I mean, Atlas Shrugged, one of my favorite books. It really feels like that these days.